So I've improved assignment one. I've saved it. I've got the texture fills. I like them. So I save it as a PSD, but I want to also resubmit it. So saving it into my assignment one folder, updating my PSD, it's right here. So if I open it with preview, it's going to look like it looks, you know, in Photoshop now. And it's at a good resolution. How do I get it onto Canvas? I need to be in Photoshop and say file, save a copy. If I'm in PhotoP, I want to say export as. And I'm going to use JPEG as the format. Right? And I'm going to go ahead and save that to the desktop. And I'm going to rename it because I already have a JPEG. This is when I submitted it the first time. It wasn't finished, right? So now I'm going to save it as assignment one, but it's going to have the name resubmission in it. You do that when you have made changes to a past assignment and you want to resubmit it for, for a better grade or just because you've improved it. So now I go to Canvas, I go to the home page, and I can skip to where I post it by going to Assignments under the Unit Modules. Go right to Assignment 1 where you post. Find my original post because you had to have posted by deadline in order to get credit. You can't post things late, right? That's, that's the one I posted. That's the one I got scored on in comments. Now I've made an improvement. So what do I do? I edit my post. And I'm going to title my resubmission. And this can still get, can get full credit after the deadline because the whole point is to improve our portfolio and use the skills we've learned so i can't put the psd into canvas i need that online format so i saved it as a jpeg to the desktop i mark that orange and then i drag and drop that in it only works if it's an online format like a png or a jpeg once that comes in, Josh, for yours, because yours is a creature that has no background, you want to save it as a PNG. I don't know why I got the little helping hand thing. Oh, that's new. Interesting. I guess so. I've, I've used gra Grammarly before. I haven't seen those little helping hands. But it's going to show me how it sounds. So you can see how those texture fills and those direct adjustments have really helped to kind of bring it together, right? At least in my mind, they have. Okay, now that I've resubmitted assignment one, I'm ready to put my creature into it. But before I can do that, I want to go to assignment one and I want to rename it. So I go to save as, and this time it's no longer assignment one, it is proving ground one. with all the improvements we've made, still with all its layers. And if you're going to give it a name, it's no longer called Gothic Jungle. This would be called a creature scape. So our invented composited landscape with a creature in it. And it's no longer going to be saved to my assignment one folder. It's going to be saved to the desktop because I haven't made a proving ground folder yet. All right, so far so good. I don't really need my sketch anymore. I can go ahead and get rid of that. Unlock it, delete it. But every other layer I'm using, every other layer is part of the image, and there's at least five of them, right? Well, you know what? I kind of like... Huh. Yeah, I might improve this even more. I don't think I need as much of this as I thought I did. That's eh, fine. All right. So now I'm working in Proving Ground 1, and I want to see on the desktop that there's a PSD called that. 
So we're revisiting assignment one. What I need to bring into that is my best creature composite that's cleaned up and saved as a PNG, like this. But my creature composite, maybe I'm looking at the comments from the instructor, or maybe I'm just knowing what I want from it. I can clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to find my PSD file for assignment two. I'm going to open that up, and it has all its layers. It might even have clone stamps on it. And I'm going to go into that, and I'm going to fix it. So this time I'm going to use a clone stamp layer again. I'm going to mark that red. And I'm going to do it more targeted, small, at 100% opacity with a soft edge brush. And I'm going to target certain textures. I'm going to set it to be on all layers. Right? And I'm going to, you know, even this stuff out. So clone stamp, you want to set the tool so it's sampling from all layers. Uh -huh. I put it on its own layer, so I'm not destroying pixels as I'm painting them in. Okay. Then I hold down Option. It changes your cursor to a crosshair. And click where I want to steal from. And then it will paste those pixels. You see how you see the crosshair is moving? And my cursor is moving. It's going to travel with me. I would, I would change the brush size, yep. So I can take all of this and then just paint it. A lot of it. And I have my background turned off because when you clone stamp from emptiness, it will just stop. Right. So what's great about that is now, because it's on its own layer, I can use my eraser. I can bring textures anywhere. And I can blend it in. Low opacity eraser, try to keep everything soft edged. So what does it look like without it? it? Looks like that. What does it look like with it? it? Looks like that. So yeah. So clone stamp is, it's like Bondo when you're finishing your car. I don't work on a car, but I know Bondo. Kind of fills in the gaps, goes over the top. I've worked on the car as much as a YouTube video allows changing lights and yeah but no specialized equipment <laughs> so I like this idea of kind of fur on the inside of the wing so I can continue that on with the clone stamp and then I can blend it in I mean I got to stop myself eventually because there's no end to it but but it's a lot of fun I got scissors So clone stamp is going to improve anything I don't like about my creature. Uh, it could fix the grass on the feet, but I'm not that concerned about that. And then what's the other tool that's really helpful? Dodge and burn. Dodge and burn. Excellent. I didn't know if you guys would get that one. So that's to fix the lighting, right? So there are places where it just feels like it's too light or too dark. Clone stamp can kind of help with that. Like I can clone stamp in shadows and textures. But if I use dodge and burn, especially on the clone stamp layer, I have a lot of control. And so I always use them the same way. Burn, I only do midtones, a low exposure, less than 30 or less than 20. Big soft brush. And I can push those midtones darker. If I go to shadows, it's going to go real fast to black, and I want to be careful about it. So that's why I stick to midtones. And we keep it at a low exposure because it gets really strong really fast. And I don't want it to go to black. 
Okay, then dodge is the opposite. It gives highlights. So I'm going to do it to the midtones. I'm going to brighten up the chest right here because it's catching the light differently than the wing. So this is it without it, and this is it with it. Right? Makes a big difference. Then I might clone stamp just a little bit more. And then I think I'm I'm almost ready to bring this guy in. Kind of squint, see if there's anything you want to change. I think this is a little heavy. A clone stamp between those. And this feels like it's cheating, like it's um, digital painting. But we're not adding our own pixels. We're still just compositing with other people's pixels. So this is still kind of pure compositing. It's just called internal compositing. And then I can layer them with low opacities on top of each other by using a low opacity eraser on my clone stamp. Kind of even things out. Okay, now I'm sure there's more corrections that could be made, but actually I'm not going to resubmit my creature yet. Instead, I'm going to save assignment two. It's improved. And now I got to save it in a way that I can bring it in. So I'm going to say file, save a copy or in Photopea it would be export, and then I'm going to save it to the desktop as a PNG with the background turned off so it's transparent. So I didn't make that many changes to it, but I'm about to make a lot of changes to it. All right? So this could be a resubmission, but if I resubmitted that in Canvas, there's really not enough of a change from when I did it before, from this to this, that it would get a different score. But when I bring it into my landscape and I play with the lighting to make it match the landscape, that is going to make some changes that might make it worth resubmitting. So now I can close this. I've saved it. And now go back to my proving ground. And I'm going to bring in that new PNG that I've cleaned up. I'm just going to let it sit. And then I'm going to move it up through the layers. A shortcut for that is command right bracket to move it up through the layers until it's on top of everything, including the texture fill. OK, it comes in as a smart object. That doesn't mean that you have to just give it its position that you brought it in. Though mine kind of works pretty well <laughs> in this position. but. Remember, you can free transform. You can command T while it's a smart object. And you can tilt it. You can warp it. Even as a smart object, that's a new feature of the newer versions of Photoshop. So you can angle its anatomy to kind of fit the environment a little bit better. So I'm thinking it might be cool if mine, I like the way it's facing, but I think it'd be cool if it was coming from like behind these rocks, maybe. Like maybe stepping in front of this rock, but behind this rock, right? So how do I do that? Well, if I just sync it back in my layers with command left bracket, I can sync it down through the texture fill, and it looks like that. If I sink it down through my layers, it can be pushed behind the foreground. But what I want to do is this. I want to take this foreground element, and I want to internally composite the part of it that goes in front of my creature. So you got to think of now about how your creature interacts with the environment. And I'm going to grab it, this stone, and then I'm going to duplicate it, Command-J. And then move that on top of my creature. Now I'm going to use my eraser with 100% opacity and a pretty hard edge. And maybe using my tablet for pressure sensitivity. And I'm going to erase away from that edge to show.